My name is Edgar Sochil and we are at Hummingbird Farm. It's a collective farm in the Excelsior in San Francisco. The name of our collective is Urban Campesin X. Urban Campesin X is for everyone. So the X is to, is to be inclusive. So it's regardless of where we fall in the spectrum, but we are acknowledging that queer, trans, two-spirit people are also Campesin X. This farm is an Ohlone territory because it's their stories, it's their ceremonies that, that have already blessed the land. It's their relationship that we are just uh, tapping into. In the collective, we're not just using the space for food. Um, we're, we're using the space for medicine, spirituality, organizing. Some of the, the ways we're organizing here on the farm is with queer ecology, because ecology is also a social construct. It's been created by humans to try to explain the natural world, but it's a perspective of this elite class that continues to try to maintain that power Ecological science in an academic sense um, has been created and structured by white, hetero, cisgendered males. So there was a lot of biopiracy from the Americas, Africa, and, and Asia. There was a need to classify everything and put it into a structure. So Carl Linnaeus, um, who's credited with creating botany, um, did a lot of this work. And so a lot of these plants, um, specifically that came from other parts of the world, are are forever labeled by European names. <laughs> Colonialism as people of color has taught us to question our own environmental knowledge, our own ecological knowledge, to doubt our traditional food ways. It's also influenced what we think of natural and unnatural in regards to homo and heterosexuality. So as we educate our next generation of youth that work in this space, we're encouraging language like uh, pollen producer and fruit producing to give both of them reproductive power without influencing this idea of gender into the flowers. So I've been working on this idea of flower bending. It incorporates this queer ecology and some Mexica ideologies, reconnecting with those plant friends, relatives. How we relate and which flowers we choose to nurture is how we will adapt to climate change. Photosynthesis is such a beautiful, beautiful thing. How to use that magic that of photosynthesis to capture as much of that um, carbon out of the atmosphere and turn it into biomass. What we call weeds, they're, they're actually doing more than most people at catching carbon, right? They're doing something about climate change. They're existing and they're resisting. That resilience of these weeds existing is similar to us as queer people of color who get called the weeds of society. So some of the things that we're working uh, in this space is, is decolonizing some of our flowers. And so that's another way that we incorporate environmental justice into our work. So these plants are here. Um, these are Sempasochil. We've used the Sempasochil to honor queer people who have died in detention centers. We are keeping these seeds and the story alive for this specific flower um, because it is something that we're organizing with, but it's also just something that is super valuable is how we honor our dead. And especially in, in this world where there's so much injustice, and we continuously get shot at, we continuously get murdered. Um, our, our life tends to be devalued because we're queer, because we're trans, because we're two-spirited, because we're people of color. This is last weekend we had a queer two-spirit ceremony here where we acknowledge queer and trans ancestors who have been influential in, in our survival, um, but also just the queerness that exists in nature. It was a, a reaffirmation that the solutions for survival and climate chaos is queerness.